You ready? <sighs> yeah, I'm ready. I feel like I, I feel like I wounded you. Introduce. What's up, everybody? I'm Brad. And I'm Sean. I am coming to you from a distance from Nashville, Tennessee, in my basement with my toys. And you can see that I'm flanked by all my villains today. Because we're talking about horror. I've got a coffee with cream and cinnamon and something called agave. So we'll see how that goes. Nice. Well, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, coming at you from a distance. I'm in my office. I got my books, my movies, baby Groot's up there. I got some green tea. Pretty intense beverage you got there. All right, yeah. so this is gonna be our third episode of our video series called The Last 10 Years. It's up there somewhere. Um, today we're gonna be talking about horror. I've been freaking jacked for this video. Um, I love horror movies and we're both we're both gonna rattle off our top tens with a couple honorable mentions squeezed in the middle. Sean, what you got for number ten? All right, kicking it right off. Number ten, I have Insidious. This one came out a while back, near the end of the 2010s, um, and it was James Wan that directed it. Um, and I feel like this is what gave him the Conjuring universe. Insidious was like. It started this kind of ghost genre that was a little different, really creepy, had a lot of jump scares, um, but also really well directed. Uh, this movie stuck with me for a long time. It spawned a bunch of sequels, but the first one was the best, and I think James Wan is awesome. And Insidious had 66% on Rotten Tomatoes. Really low one, yeah. Um, Brad, what do you have for number 10? That is one thing about the horror genre. It's not very respected by the Rotten Tomato peeps. For number 10, I've got, I'm going controversial right off the bat. Number 10, I have It Chapter 1 from 2017. Uh, this is the only movie um, in that series that might be better than the 1990 miniseries, in my opinion. This chapter correctly uh, captured the terror of Pennywise. Um, but this part always has an edge, though. So I think I backed it up a little bit because it's just more, it's just scarier when Pennywise is messing with the kids. Literally, when they're adults, uh, like, seriously, they can just get in their cars and drive away from Derry. It's like, it's over. <laughs> Movie ends. So I, I saw this in the theater with my wife as an 86 on Rotten Tomatoes. Now for my number nine, I have 2015's The Visit. This movie is grossly underappreciated. I'm not going to say it's underrated necessarily. It's just underappreciated. It gets a lower amount of respect because of its director who was in the slump at the time. But he's one of my favorite directors. And to me, he can do almost no wrong. This may be fringe horror. But um, as far as movies that I'll go back to repeatedly, this has to be near the top. I saw this in the theater on opening night with my wife. And all I have to say is, Yahtzee! <laughs> has a 67 on Rotten Tomatoes. It's ridiculous. What do you have for number nine? Oh, Dude, that's criminal that you have it at chapter 10, or at, at 10. All right, number nine, I have A Quiet Place. It was John Krasinski's uh, debut into directing with his wife, uh, Emily Blunt, and this was super cool, very tense. I like the whole premise of these, you have to be quiet around these beings. It kind of gave me alien vibes. I'm excited for the sequel, but I'm ho hoping that this becomes a franchise like Alien and that they go full action movie for the sequel. But I have high hopes and I really love this one. It has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Number eight. We're going back with M. Night Shyamalan. It's split. Uh, it's got a 77% on Rotten Tomatoes. This one was super awesome because it had the stinger at the end saying that it was an unbreakable uh, sequel but also I thought that um, just the premise of this movie was really good very terrifying how he has these girls locked up and he's got all these different personalities but the acting was a plus on this one all right for number eight for me I have get in the way back machine and watch scream four it's from 2011. I don't remember, because it's so, been so 10, almost 10 years. I don't remember a lot of the details of this one. I just remember the way it made me feel in the theater when I saw it. And the way it made me feel was, was dirty. 
This movie is really dark, really dark parts. Uh, had a lot of shocking moments, twists, turns. Saw this one in the theater with my wife, and I think it's time for a rewatch. It's also got a 60 on Rotten Tomatoes, which is nonsense. Nonsense! All right, number seven. This is when it gets real tight for me. This whole rest of this list is 2016's Don't Breathe. This movie's awesome. It's a reverse home invasion story about some punk kids that break into the wrong, and I do mean the wrong, house, okay? I saw this one with my wife in the theater. A lot of people haven't seen this movie, and I recommend it all the time, except for one scene. <laughs> it's got an 88. It's got an 88 on Rotten Tomatoes. What do you have for number seven? <laughs> Ooh, man, that one scene took it Woo! a little too far. But uh, number seven. <laughs> number haven't seven. Turkey. I haven't had turkey since I watched that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, this is so <laughs> gross. Alright, number seven. Going back into the Alien franchise, I have Prometheus. I was on Whoa. the edge on whether wow. this would okay. be a horror movie or not, but if I had Alien as my top horror movie ever, I think that Prometheus has to be considered a, a horror. Um, this one is super underrated. It's a little slow, and the plot can be a little wonky at times but the acting is great, and I love just the premise of they're just trying to go out into space and find out where they came from. Um, super creepy, I recommend that people go and see it. It's got a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes, but go see it. Um, and then rolling right into number six, this one is super popular. It's got a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's uh. Get Out. This movie was super awesome. It was Jordan Peele's uh, debut as a director as well, just like John Krasinski earlier. Um, and I had heard a lot of buzz about this movie and I wasn't too sure about it, but whenever I saw it, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. This one was super cool. I'm not gonna say too much about it. Definitely go and see this. Number six. <laughs> I have 2016's Split. I can't believe this movie's four years old. It seems like just yesterday that the cleaning crew at the theater had to scrub my brains off the seats and the ceiling from where my mind was blown. What the heck? The single greatest twist or surprise ending of a movie that I've ever seen in the theater. Okay? It's just excellent. This movie itself is very creepy anyway and intense, but the ending makes this movie legendary. It's it, it spurned the Unbreakiverse, if you will. I saw this in the theater with my wife, and then I even drugged the most critical man in the world to see it later, and he loved it. It's got a 77 on Rotten Tomatoes. Now it's my time to burst into the top five with 2016's Lights Out. I'm telling you, man, to me, this is the scariest movie on this list. I went home after seeing this in the theater with my great friend, Baby Noah. Shout out, Baby Noah, if you're watching this. Uh, to an empty, dark house. My wife and kids were out of town. And I'm just saying, that night, I was no longer a grown man. Okay? I was truly petrified for the whole night. It's got a 76 on Rotten Tomatoes. What do you have for number five? All right, man, great picks. Number five, I don't think you've seen this one. It's It Follows. Came out in 2014, which is a really good year for horror. Um, a lot of indie horrors were coming out at that time. This one's a throwback to 80s vibes. Um, and the premise is a little weird of this one, but just the direction of this movie was so cool. Um, the fact that you have this thing that's following you around and there's nothing you can do about it, and it's gonna kill you, it's terrifying. This was excellently directed, and it definitely sends out that message that you shouldn't have sex as a teenager. So, going right into number four, and I have The Visit. This oh, one has 67% wow. on Rotten nice. Tomatoes. Brad had this way back there. I had so much fun with this movie. To me, this it was, was awesome. M. Night Shyamalan coming back uh, from a slump, like Brad had said. 
and he's had some pretty good movies since then. Um, but this one was just so off the wall, fun and creepy. I will never forget the scene of the grandma chasing the girl in the, the under or at the, the bottom of the house. Yeah, I'm That's coming. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, it creeped me out. And then at the wow. end with the diaper. Ooh, so man. Ooh. I haven't worn Definitely. a diaper since that movie came out. <laughs> Stop lying to us, Brad. Fine. But this movie's great. Like I said, it has 67% on Rotten Tomatoes. Really underrated. All right, time for number four. I have Halloween 2018. The, this newest entry into my all-time favorite franchise of any genre. I loved it, okay? I know it disappointed some people, and it definitely took some weird turns but I felt like it was the closest thing to the original, you know, the original two um, that we've ever gotten. I saw this one a few times, actually, with once with the great and powerful Betty. Then I saw it with the most critical man in the world, and he liked it. And then I think I also saw this with the blob and my little sister. So Dang. I love this movie. It's got a 79 on Rotten Tomatoes. A little low, but whatever. They suck. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for my number three. Dr. Sleep. Came out last year. We did a full mo review of this movie. It's in this playlist right here. Okay. It was also my number one movie of 2019, which you can also see here. I saw this alone in the theater, and this movie is perfectly cast, perfectly acted, with an original and fresh premise, um, even, even though it's a book, um, but it's very rare for a sequel to just feel this new and, and lively, in my opinion. Excellent film. And what the heck? 77 on Ron Tomatoes? I can't even believe that. <laughs> and to me, it's like a 90, at least, just for artistic quality, but whatever. They suck. 77. What you got for number three? Well, Brad, what do you always say? Average mind. <laughs> they think alike, because number three, I have Dr. Sleep. Nice. This one has a 77% on Rotten Tomatoes. Brad just said it all. I can't believe, like you said, the 77%. I know it underperformed at the box office, but one thing that's really cool is it's already spawned a sequel that uh, the Mike Flanagan or whatever is supposed to make. Stop creeping me out with that doll, man. <laughs> What the? Gosh. But Dr. Sleep was great. And this one came out of nowhere. Stephen King is awesome. Sometimes his movie ad adaptations aren't very awesome, but this one was. I can't wait to watch the director's cut. Number two, Brad, what the heck, dude? It's it, chapter one. Dude, this movie was so good. I don't know what it was. Maybe maybe you have more nostalgia for the old one, so that kind of changes do. how you view this one. But for me, seeing this in theater, I was creeped out. And something about the visual style of this movie just stuck with me. Like you said, I do like that this one focuses on the kids, something about a terrifying clown going after kids. Uh, it's just creepier. And they did a really good job with one with this one. No second was wasted, and I really enjoyed it. I'm excited to see what your number two is, Brad. Ooh, it's getting good. It's getting good. I was so excited for this list, and for good reason, because my number two is Train to Busan. Ooh. 2016. I kept hearing I had to watch this and watch it and watch it. I heard this quite a few times and I finally watched this movie alone in my room with a massive plate of tacos in front of me. Then I made my wife watch it. Guys, this movie is nonstop chaos. It's so easy for me to proudly recommend this movie. Tons of action with tons of heart. 93 on Rotten Tomatoes for good reason. All right, well, I guess that, that means that it's time for our honorable mentions. Me and Brad both have four, and we're just gonna list them off. So for me, this was a, such a hard list to go with. For number one, I've got Lights Out, like Brad had already said. It was a great movie. Uh, it had kind of vibes of like early 2000s, kind of 
like the ring movies for me it was really good next up i have oculus um another really good one it had a creepy ending that was not very fun and then third i have autopsy of jane doe if you haven't seen this one it's on netflix go and watch it and then lastly i have devil this one came out in the early 2010s it was about good people choice. stuck in an elevator Flew way under the radar. M. Night Shyamalan produced this one, so I think this is when he started to get things back on track, and it kind of propelled him into the rest of the 2010s. Really good movie. Brad, what do you got I, for I, honorable mentions? I totally agree about Devil. It was on my master list, but it, I just I didn't have room for it. All right, my honorable mentions, I think, are going to stir up some controversy, but that's okay. My first one I have Insidious from 2010, which has a 66 on Rotten Tomatoes. I just watched this a couple months ago for the first time. It's super freaky. Um, and then I have 2013's The Conjuring. It's got an 85 on Rotten Tomatoes. This movie's excellent, but guys, this is overrated, y'all. Spawned a bunch of subpar spinoffs and sequels. And then I've got 2017. Did he quit? Did he quit? <laughs> he quit. Um... <laughs> Then I've got 2017's Get Out. This was a bigger list. This would definitely make it on there. It's a 98 on Rotten Tomatoes. This is, it's nearly perfect, but it's not scary enough um, to make this list for me. And then I have 2018's A Quiet Place. It has a 95 on Rotten Tomatoes. Easily one of the best theater experiences I've ever had. Never have I been so scared to eat a piece of popcorn in public <laughs> as I was in this movie. And don't even laugh. You don't even eat popcorn. Don't even don't even act like you're relatable. Okay? Don't even do that. This is good. This is working. Now for the moment that you've all been waiting for. With no further ado, it's time for Sean and I to flip a coin. I have the lucky nickel. The nickel that determines all things. <laughs> wow. Sporting is not your number one sport. I go first. Dude, my number one is The Conjuring. Come on. Come on. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, this is 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. For good reason, this movie sets the standard for all horror movies from now on. It's like, it's like, uh, what's it called was? The Exorcist was in the 70s. This is the new standard. This creeped me out. And there's a reason that pe that movies have followed the pattern that The Conjuring laid out for the past four or five years. It's because it works so well. James Wan crafted this world and this haunting tale perfectly, and it had heart with a great family in the middle of it. And I will never forget some of the imagery in this movie. That's my number one, folks. Brad, let's see what yours is. Your offense to me not having The Conjuring <laughs> I, Conjuring at least made my list. What you have done today is illegal, okay? It's illegal. You left off one of the best movies that's ever been made and ever been put on film. You already know what I'm going to say. The fact that you left this off, I think we might have to end this channel right now. You didn't even give it an honorable freaking mention. It's Cabin in the Woods. Everybody knows that's the best horror movie in the last 10 years. Everybody knows it that it's at least a top 10. It's right? not even a horror movie. Yes, it is. It's a <laughs> horror comedy. 2011, everybody knows I love this movie. Like, love it. It mocks and it pays homage to the Cabin in the Woods genre. We rank this movie really high on our, our, our all-time horror list, which is up here. Of course, it tops this list as well for me flawless, hilarious, terrifying, and mysterious. Easily a top 15 movie twist, all time for me. I saw this in the theater of my wife. If you haven't seen this, watch it tonight. Tonight? How could that not make your top 14 movies? All right, and for uh, before we close out, a little healthy competition where we compare our Rotten Tomato scores of our list. My list was a 79.4. What do you have? My list, I got an 82%. What? 
82. So we have a clear winner on that that front. Yeah, because you put get out in there. That's the only reason you did it. Well, before Brad murders me from a distance, thank you so much for watching today. Make sure you smash the like button, like Brad always says. Comment down below. I may have won the Rotten Tomatoes battle today, but I did not win your vote, and I desperately need it. Brad's no. up on me, two no. to one. Don't let him do that. <laughs> That's pandering. <laughs> you're pandering. All right. Make sure when you're watching, you're always watching from a distance.